Hey kids, and welcome to Designed by Wingnut Social. I'm your host, Darla Jethro Powell. And on today's show, we have a completely unsolicited, well, I guess that's not correct word because they're not espousing Wingnut Social's praises, but they are espousing the power that social media has on getting real life design clients to give you money to design their spaces and how important it is to have a social media presence, particularly on Instagram to attract those clients. And this is a real life story by Allison Handler of Allison Handler Design. She's been in business. Listen to this, folks. I'm not blowing smoke up your butt. She's been in business for less than two years. She's already hitting a million dollars in gross revenue. And she credits Instagram to 90 something percent of her success in attracting those ideal clients. So in this conversation, Allison and I just have a little organic conversation about what she's doing in order to get that success. And you're going to glean some tips and some tricks and hopefully some inspiration and motivation to finally get out there if you're not on social media to do it. And if you are on social media, some direction and some some ideas and how to do it better. Just from her own experience, her Instagram account has not even quite 3,000 followers. So it's not about you have to have 10, you have to have 20,000 followers. It's quality over quantity. So I think you're going to really enjoy this conversation with Allison Handler. First, I just want to tell you, if you haven't heard already, Wingnut Academy is live with our very first course, Instagram for Interior Designers. It's on demand. It's online. It's robust. There's tons of crap in this course. And it's exactly the methodology and strategy that we use here on behalf of our Wingnut social clients to get them ideal clients. There's a lot of clients going around to pay them money to design their spaces. So for more information on that, head on over to wingnutsocial.com, wingnutacademy.com. They'll both get you there, whichever one you can remember. All right. Now let's tell you a little bit more about my guest, Allison Handler. It all begins and ends with relationships. She does go over that in our talk with the relationships she built on Instagram. Spoiler alert. Allison Handler Design prides itself on building and maintaining incredible relationships with both clients and vendors. Important. Working hard every day to make sure that a client's wants and needs are satisfied by keeping a close-knit but wide-reaching team of vendor partners on hand to seamlessly execute The vision. As lead designer and visionary, Allison oversees all projects, ensuring the AHD aesthetic, Allison Handler Designs, I see what you did there, is incorporated while keeping the client's personal preferences. I'm going to assume that's what that is because it cut off. There was a character limit on the the intake there. Anyway, ladies and germs, help me in welcoming Allison Handler to the show. Hey there, Allison Handler. Welcome to the show. How the hell are you? I'm doing great, Darla. How are you? I'm doing terrific. You do not look anything like someone who's just had technical difficulties for the last 30 minutes. (laughs) Well, you know, (laughs) just a little uh, experience, unfortunately, with that. So, (laughs) But now look at you. Now you're a pro and you're ready for the next one, right? The next podcast interview. Okay, great. So, Allison, I did tell the... uh, the audience a little bit about your background. You are an interior designer, Allison Handler Designs, and you, you you were telling me in the green room that you've only been in business for two years. Just under two years, actually. And you really, really, really wanted to tell the audience your experience with marketing Allison Handler Design on social media, Instagram in particular, uh, right? For sure. That's your number one channel. And you are not a wingnut social client. So you came to me with this to help the audience to realize, I'm I'm assuming, we haven't gotten into our conversation yet, that if they're not marketing their business on Instagram or on social media, they're leaving money on the table. Do I have that correct? A hundred percent. Okay. So two years. Uh, Tell us a little bit about how you got into the interior design business and we'll dig in. Sure. So I um, actually have a background in the fashion industry. Um, Cool. I was in the fashion industry for 20 years um, doing the daily grind. I live in New Jersey, um, about 25, 30 minutes outside of New York City. So I was doing the daily grind every day um, into the city. And, you know, I had a great career. I had um, a successful career. I I was doing well. But it just, you know, it wasn't filling my cup up anymore. Mm -hmm. And COVID happened and all of that. And I was just, I got a little taste of that, you know, work from home life. And I was like, hmm, kind of, you know, kind of like this. And I have two young kids and the lifestyle that I was living as far as my career just wasn't doing it for me anymore. So I started through 
a combination of friends and, you know, we had bought two homes, one that we renovated ourselves and one that was new construction, um, which we live in now. And then, you know, a combination of kind of friends asking me for help and pushing me. I found myself kind of pursuing this path and not realizing, you know, I could actually make a career out of it. Uh, the stars aligned and I wound up finding Luann and her podcast. That's Luann um, Nigera, well-designed yep. business. We have to give her her credit. We sure do. <laughs> I actually recently, fairly recently, recorded an episode with her, which was like a major, you know, full circle moment for me, but um, found her podcast, started listening to it every day on my commute, connected with Luann because, you know, she's based in New Jersey. I'm based in New Jersey. Now I am a, a window works client, which is Luann's other business. Yeah, for sure. Um yeah. Signed up for her Luann University. So Luann gets all the credit here, basically. Luann will listen to this and laugh. But um, <laughs> She'll, she probably knows it. She knows. Oh, she knows. <laughs> we talk all the time now. Um, She's awesome. She really is. And signed up for Luann University and kind of hit the ground running. So I started my business in uh, June of 2021. And I ended up quitting my job and doing this full time in August of 2021. Um, Amazing. Yeah, it really is. And here we are now about a year, 18, 20 months later, a little bit less, a little bit more, whatever. Okay. And um, this past year, we grossed just over a million dollars. Holy cow. That's amazing. That is great. It really is. Thank you so much. And So Luann um, is terrific, right? Luann, yeah. um, I, I was actually just talking on with Re um, Rebecca Hay that Luann changed my life. Listening to her show, I used to be a cop changed my career, mm -hmm. did interior design, kind of fell into it a little yep. bit in the way I've you did. I've listened to your episodes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> and did the Luann Live. Uh, I didn't do Luann University or anything, although I think it would have behooved me to do it because I made a lot of mistakes. I hosted Luann Live, though, if that's anything. Amazing. I I'm doing an interview with her this Thursday. I don't know when that's airing. Uh, but she's been a huge uh, influence in my life. So that's Luanne Naguerre of a well-designed business if you're living under a rock. Mm. And that's quite the testament to her academy, her university, I think she calls it, right? Yes. Uh, and that not even two, I said two years, but we're not even saying two years and you're already grossing a million bucks yeah. right a out the gate. A million buckos. A million yep. buckaroos. Yep. That is... <laughs> I think we all just need a moment of silence to appreciate how <laughs> inc you. incredible that is. Thank you. Yeah. It's been a wild ride. It really has. And I'm, well, it I'm, sounds like it. How big is your team? It's just me and one other girl. Wow. And, yeah. So we work hard. <laughs> but, you know, I, I have to say, and I did um, speak to this a lot on my podcast with Luann. Sure. Um, my my success, in addition to, you know, my social media and my marketing, which we'll get into, um, mm -hmm. has really been the fact that I've aligned myself very early on in my career with the right partners mm -hmm. and, you know, my vendors are my partners and they're essentially an extension of my business. You know, my contractor, my tile, my cabinetry, my, you know, plumbing and lighting and appliance, you know, they are my right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, you name it, my, you know, kidneys, all of it. They're so, your Daniel Day-Lewis, my exactly, left foot. I'm exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but um, I've aligned myself luckily and, you know, from trial and error too a little bit, but very early on with the right partners. And um, amazing. that's really helped me so much. So Well, it's, no, it's, it's not shocking. I mean, it, it is a little amazing. Shocking to me that 18 months and less than two years, you're um, you're, you're doing that, but it's not shocking to me that Luann had a hand in that. So terrific. Congrats on your success. And I, I look forward to seeing how you grow. I mean, where you Thank go you. from here. So this particular show, we're just going to talk with her. I can, we could talk about a million things, we sure but could. we're going to talk about how talk. impact. <laughs> so mm, yeah. We're going to talk about how impactful the, the social media marketing piece it was of that sure. success because there's designers out there, old school and even some new school, that mm -hmm. are going to tell you until their face turns blue. And even some uh, business coaches that you're not going to find your uh, clients at all from social media, from Instagram, from any other channels. And if you do, they're not going to be high-end clients. So let's break that apart and let's sure. let's take us through that journey of what you did and how it's working. So I guess I would start by saying I'm – part of the generation who I always remember having a computer, right? Like I always, you know, even, you know, when I was a kid, I'm 41. Okay. Let's put that out there. And so I, um, 
it was very early on in technology, but I always had a kid. I had AOL growing up, you know, the chat rooms, all of that. So it was always mm-hmm. a part of my life. So I was always in that mindset and that world. And then Facebook came out and then shortly after that, Instagram. And so that's oh, I was in college at the time. So that's always been something that I've been comfortable with and grown up around. Sure. Um, that makes a difference. It does. Definitely. Um And, you know, also being in fashion, I saw the power of influencers and, you know, I mean, not even just being in fashion, everybody, everybody follows their favorite influencers and, you know, all of that stuff. So that was always something that kind of intrigued me. And I, I definitely fell, um, prey to, you know, shopping through influencers and all of that stuff. So I always, you know, that was always um, a part of my, my world. So I understood Instagram. I understood how it worked and I went for it. So, but not right away. So, um, when I first started my business, like I said, you know, I connected with a lot of the right people and I actually connected with them through Instagram. I mean this, I live in, like I said, a suburb of New York city, um, in Bergen County, New Jersey. And, um, it's a, big area but the design community is small and tight-knit and everybody that's kind of anybody if you want to say that knows everybody (laughs) knows each other and we all connect through instagram or we know each other in person or we know somebody who knows somebody and in fact like my cabinet vendor who i do hundreds of thousands of dollars of business with every year and one is my is is one of my closest partners and now one of my closest friends we actually met through instagram he slid into my dms very early on in my business and we met in person and started working together and haven't looked back since and it's just been and he actually has an amazing business imperial cabinetry shout out um in edgewater new jersey hey hey Hey, timmy um he has a great business and he's grown his business, you know, all through Instagram as well. So, okay. um, so th- but this is the networking piece and that's super important. Now, when I was doing interior design full time, I was picking up contractors and vendors and mm-hmm. building those relationships well. So that's super important for the business side of it. Sure. Now let's just kind of steer it a little bit to the advertising piece and getting clients. Are, have you in just two years gotten paying clients from your social media marketing? Almost all of my paid clients are through Instagram at this okay. point. So to so walk us through that process, sure. what does that look like? Are they DMing you? Are you taking them to your website? What are you doing to, to reel them in? So I kind of found a little niche um, for myself with my Instagram and I kind of combine my personal life and my business life on my Instagram, Allison Handler Design. Sure. That's called a lifestyle account. Yeah, that's yes, basically that's, what it is. Mm-hmm, yep. So, you know, when I, it's very hard and I get this and I people ask me all the time, like, you know, what is your number one tip, tip and what's your advice? And, and I always say, get your face on Instagram. And I have Amen. to tell you, when I first started doing this, I did not want to get my damn face on Instagram because it's scary. Like, it who is. wants to put their face on Instagram and have, you know, people nitpicking and this and that? And like, it's scary, right? So mm-hmm. I'm very dear friends with Meredith Huck, who I know also recorded an episode with you. Love Meredith um, Huck. Love Meredith. She's one of my best, closest friends who we also met through Instagram. But... um <laughs> But she um, is great at social media as well. And she puts herself out there and she inspired me. So it, I think it was like last January of 20 when it turned 2022. One of my New Year's resolutions was I'm going to get my damn face on Instagram. I'm going to follow <laughs> Meredith and I'm going to do what she does and I'm going to get my face on Instagram. So I started doing it and it was scary and it was hard, but it was like ripping off a bandaid. And now you can't get me to stop. Now you can't. <laughs> stop. Now this face is all over Instagram. And even it's, though it's so funny that that is true. And of course, Meredith Huck, House of Huck is her Instagram, yes. right? You go go follow her. She she kills it. She's kills great it. with the video and she has a videographer and she's she, and she is front and freaking center. She sure and is. you know, it's like beating a dead horse to say that if your name is Susan McNuggets Interiors, then Susan McNuggets needs to get in front of the camera and mm-hmm. have her face on there at least once every nine shots at I the minimum. I tell that pe- to people all the time and like, you know, interestingly enough like and I also you know I have like all my stupid little hashtags that I do and like like team zero chill is one of the ones that I use all the time like hashtag team team zero chill because I love to post projects when they're like not anywhere close to being postable so but because I'm so excited about it and so 
you know, zero chill about it. I post them like <laughs> mid construction, hashtag team zero chill. So people like, you know, know that about sure. me. And and a lot of influencers who've grown like Amber Lewis and stuff, they yes. use what was my crappy iPhone photos or hashtag or something like that when they started out. Yes, you, exactly. But you can you can get user generated content, you can get fans sharing that yes. and having the work show up and increasing your reach. Not smaller accounts, maybe you're not getting a whole bunch of traction. And I don't mean you, I just mean in general. Mm-hmm. But I have friends that do have those branded hashtags that are growing to 20, 30, 40, mm-hmm. 50,000 followers and their fans are doing design work or tagging them with those. Yes. And that's 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 really powerful when you grow. It's a yeah. good long play and to have that. A hundred percent. And like I have my other stupid ones that I do like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. Um <laughs> Uh, inappropriate shoe choices like I'm I'm five foot one in real life and I IRL and I run around town in four inch heels all the time Mm -hmm. and everybody that knows me knows that about me and sorry not sorry it's just who I am and and so I'll be on freaking job sites with like you know sawdust and wood chips and c- broken cement wearing my four inch heels and my contractors are like whoa 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 we don't have insurance for this like you need to you know put some sensible <laughs> shoes on and i'm like ha- t- hashtag inappropriate shoe choices like it's just what i do and i have found and like i'm just authentically myself right so right. like i've so i have my whole spiel about this and like i'll get into this but um so it's kind of twofold interior design is such a personal business right so so you're really connecting with your clients. You're in their bedrooms. You're talking to them about what side of the bed they sleep on. You're asking them how they use their toilets. You're asking them, you know, do they want a bidet on their toilet? You know what I mean? All of these very personal things. So you become very personally involved with your clients. So yeah. for me, I am a personality. I'm sure you can tell that by knowing me for what? five no. minutes. You're such a wallflower. <laughs> yeah. I wish you'd I come am, out of your show. This is me unapologetically. This is who I am. Love me or leave me. That's what I always say. Hopefully you love me, but you know, it's whatever. <laughs> if you Teach leave me, own. it wasn't meant to be. Exactly. So this is terrific. I love the branded hashtags and the personality piece of it. And of course, that can be part of an overall hashtag strategy that's maybe not quite so specific, right, to build the brand. So besides the really specific personality driven Allison Handler hashtags, do you have uh, the another like a yeah, adjunct? So, okay. so kind of like what I was saying is it's such a personal business and yeah. I want my it's twofold. I want my clients to know me for me and Mm -hmm. say, I really like her personality. I think we can work well together. And obviously Mm -hmm. like my design style and all of that. Sure. Um, but also I'm, I feel like I'm also organically filtering out the clients who, if I'm, if I say, and you don't like the fact that I say on Instagram or like I drink rosé a lot like that's my thing like I have a yep. sign and neon sign in my office that says rosé all day. Like anybody that follows me knows like I'm a big rosé girl. Like for Christmas, I was basically bathing in in rosé because i got you know everybody knows that about me that sounds expensive no it wasn't you know it was gifts so it's okay for me you know but um oh not literally bathing okay got it. no not literally bathing i just i got a lot of it is what i'm trying to say but um if you are not vibing with me then we're not a good fit to work together so I love it's, that point. it kind of it, yeah it goes both ways so i'm organically filtering out the people who i don't want to work with either no offense love ya mean it but like you know it has to be an enjoyable experience for both of us i've found that by putting my face out there by being a relatable human by talking about the fact that i'm a mom and my kids and my life isn't perfect and i have green hair and like you know what i mean like i'm just a normal girl um people feel very comfortable reaching out to me on Instagram. So I get DMs all day long from people just commenting on anything, whether it's a project that I did and I showed or, you know, my outfit that I'm wearing that day or my inappropriate shoe choices or whatever. I get a lot of um, engagement that way. And a lot of times that engagement makes people feel much more comfortable and saying, hey, you know, I really want to renovate my kitchen but I don't know where to even start and I don't know if I can afford an interior designer but you're so funny and you know I I follow you on Instagram and da 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 you know so Mm -hmm. so on and so forth you see where I'm going with this right so you're really breaking down the authenticity piece in a way that we can all relate to as a real human being yeah and I think that as business owners we forget about that we we start our shingle Darla Powell interiors but maybe we are just we want to shrink or play small and you and you can't first of all but to your point just getting out there on on video or an image and showing your personality, people are going to feel 
more comfortable with you when they see that your personality aligns with theirs. You're not perfect. They're going to feel less intimidated mm-hmm. and you're more approachable to to go to that next step to ask about your design services. And we we get the biggest pushback at our agency, um, which is Wingnut Social for interior designers mm-hmm. for um, digital marketing. From interior designers who just do not want to do that. They won't do it under in, in any circumstance. They feel uncomfortable doing it. And we still get them results, but not as good as the designers who are like, yeah, I'm going to go out. I'm going to do these videos. Mm-hmm. Boop, 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 boop. That's the, the, the ultimate combination there. And I, 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 I'm, it's like beating a dead horse sometimes. I can't yeah, tell you. Yeah, it's hard. That made such a difference in my business when I was doing full-time design, when I started just doing the videos. And people would tell me, you know, I watch you. I love how you you act and comport yourself. And I was just me, nerdy, geeky, whatever. I'm not wearing high heels to the job site. <laughs> <laughs> but the people who, who got that loved that and hired us. Exactly. So besides that personality piece of which you, you bring in that in spades, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. I'm sure well, you thanks. rock that. What else are you using as far as uh, content right? Content creation, content strategy to to bring in those clients? Or is that really just your main focus? Well, it's a little bit of both. So I post predominantly stories. So I do obviously post to my main feed, but mm-hmm. I do not like posting unprofessional, not or iPhone pictures, I guess. Hashtag yeah. crappy iPhone pics are my jam. Shout out <laughs> That's Amber. It. That's right? the one I was trying yeah, to remember. I, know. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do not like posting crappy iPhone pics to my feed. I post yeah. them all day long to my stories and then I'll highlight, I'll save to my highlights. Um, but on my main feed, I really do like it to be like curated. I mean, if you scroll down and you dig deep in my Instagram, it's there for sure. And but, you know, now that I'm obviously more established and I have the projects to photograph, um, I really only like to post the professional photos. However, I story my little heart out every day. <laughs> I'm posting five to seven stories at least a day, sometimes nice. more. Um, and I'm a real time poster, too. Like I get yelled at all the time by like my friends and my my family because they're like, put the phone down, put the damn phone down. I'm like, I'm working, you know, yeah, but, same. but, um, I will see something and shoot it and it goes immediately on my Instagram. And then, you know, the DMs start coming in or the likes mm-hmm. or the, this or the, that. So I'm constant and it could be anything. Like today I was at a slab yard earlier and I was posting amazing, beautiful marble slabs. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards I went to lunch with a girlfriend and they had like this beautiful dessert section and then my husband sent me flowers for valentine's day so i said you know what i mean so i'm all over the place a little bit but um it all boils down to my work mostly um but again it's like team zero chill i'll post unfinished spaces and then people are get engaged with that and they get excited to see the finished spaces and they follow up with with it and they're they're checking my instagram and so Hey, interior designers, are you just throwing content at Instagram without a plan or a strategy and you have no idea what you are doing in order to attract your ideal client? Well, I'm here to tell you that we have a solution for that. I am so excited that our very first Wingnut Academy online course, Instagram for Interior Designers, is finally here. This extremely robust and comprehensive digital marketing course will take you from meh to amazing with your Instagram marketing. I can't tell you how many designers have come to me and said, listen, Darla, I'm not ready. I'm not in a position to delegate my social media marketing out to a professional like you yet. I need a more entry level, a more affordable level of a course or something like that, that I can actually use to attract my ideal client and implement it myself or delegate it to an intern or an employee. And I hear you. And here it is. Instagram for Interior Designers contains our exact secret sauce that we use here at Wingnut, strategy, methodology, resources, systems and processes, uh, everything that we do here on behalf of our Wingnut clients to get them the success that you've heard them speak about here on this podcast and on the website and in other places, that is all contained in this course. We threw the baby out with the bathwater in this course. It full Everything is here. Everything they're going to need. There are over 31 lessons, seven modules, downloadable workbooks, resources, and more. I cannot tell you how um, thorough 
and complete this courses. In fact, when my director first saw this, she said, man, I hope we're charging a ton for this because there's just so much in it. So for more information on Wingnut Academy and our very first course, Instagram for interior designers, head on over to wingnutsocial.com. Check out Wingnut Academy there in the drop down menu and you'll see it in all its glory. Instagram for interior designers. That's wingnutsocial.com, Wingnut Academy. So that's a lot of designers are listening to this and they're like, okay, that's you. People don't give a shit about what I'm doing and they're not going to, you know, behind the scenes or going in. And that's where they're wrong. I agree. I 100% agree. It, it, that's, where the, that's where they're wrong. People are infatuated by the behind the scenes of your personality, of your business. And even digging back a little bit to something you said that you're more of a lifestyle brand, an interior designer. Folks, that's how you really blow up beyond just that interior design niche and become, if this is something you're interested in, um, a celebrity of sorts. You know, get you get recognized at the ball games. I people do. ask you about yep. People it's ask so you about weird. your services. Yep. I get stopped on the streets. It's so yep. and I only have three thousand followers, you know. That's my next question. So yeah. there I'm sure that some people are dismissing it and say, Yeah, well, I don't have ten, twenty thousand followers. This is not my game, but you don't you have not even quite 3,000 followers on Instagram. I don't know what your other numbers are. So that is, that's pretty impressive as well. Two years, 3,000 followers. I'm assuming it's quality over quantity. Absolutely. Okay. My enga- I get very high engagement too with my that's followers. Key. And, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of time it's the same people over and over again. Obviously, it's my clients too who are engaging with me. But a lot of times it's people that I do not know that are like mm-hmm. who follow me and they're like, even if it's not interior design related, they're like, oh, my God, I love your shoes. You wear the best shoes every day. Can you pull po- or some people are like I- I- anything and everything. And you know what? I'm ha- and I will always answer everyone too. like that's the other thing. That was I my will- next question. Yes, I will always. <laughs> OK, so I think about it like this, like something I said earlier, like I've o- I've grew up, you know, with Instagram, whatever, following influencers. And there are some influencers that I love to follow. And there are some influencers, influencers who I'm like, eh, unfollow, you're boring. And what attracted me to the influencers I like to follow, you know, like they're real, like they show it's not just like trying to sell me a handbag or whatever. It's like Mm -hmm. all of these things that I feel inspired by and that is cool to me and I relate to them on and I will sometimes reach out, even though I don't know these people, I'll sometimes reach out and we have like little, you know, whatever um, DM conversations going back and forth. And, and to me, it's like you, you, these people, when you put yourself out there too, no matter if you have 3000 followers, five followers or 50,000 followers, when you put yourself out there, you put that air of like, I don't want to say celebrity because like I am not a celebrity. Like, let's get that straight. I don't think that for sure. It's almost like, but when you put yourself out there, you have that kind of like stigma attached that like, okay, well she's something, you know, she's putting herself Mm -hmm. out there, you know? And so people like, I've had people come up to me me and be like, Oh my God, you're out. You know? And I'm just like, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like yeah and you know like I'll never forget when one of our clients said oh my god I got recognized at the baseball game and someone was asking about my services I'm like a little celebrity because yeah. <laughs> I was like that, that was a good day I, I felt really good about that it's cool I had I had another interior designer reach out to me because she saw me in the parking lot of Target and so she dm'd me the next day and she was like oh my god i saw you i was too afraid to come up to you and say hi and i was like that is so weird to me but okay fine she's like would you ever go be want to go grab coffee and and chat and i was like of course and a couple days later i went and i met her we grabbed coffee i you know chatted with her but you know it's it's i don't know I mean, people look at you and think of you and almost like respect you on another level, I guess, because I mean, it's such a weird, bizarre thing. It really it truly is, is. Yeah. but it, for me, and I think for a lot of other people too, it really works. So another um, fun story that I have is I follow this. She's an influencer um, on Instagram. Her name is Ina, Ina, your shoes. She is the personal shopper at Bergdorf in the city. And wow. she has, like 30,000 followers on Instagram. And I've been following her for years. Like she posts all of like the handbag porn, the shoe porn, like all of it. So I just follow her and drool. So about a year ago, I um, reposted something that she posted on my Instagram. And so she started following me on Instagram. A few days later, reached out to me and um, was interested in working together. So we actually met in person. We clicked right away. And um, I ended up doing a project for her, a small project. She lived in a condo at the time. And immediately 
um, because she had so many followers immediately um, when she started posting about me, my follow every time she would post about me, I would get a hundred new followers, 200 nice. new followers, whatever it is. Um, and now, you know, fast forward a year later, they just bought a new house. Um, we're doing a complete gut reno and addition to the house. And again, now that she's posting me again, more followers. Every time she posts me, I get at least a handful of inquiries and it has also turned into several large pro- additional projects. For That's terrific. That's so good. So it's a combination of the networking, like the getting mm-hmm. to meet real life flesh and blood people, right. friends, family, you know, influencers, people, clients, and also the the digital piece to get other yes. clients. Right. I love it. That's such a terrific story. Is there anything, Allison, that um, you want to add to this topic that you think that the interior designers out there who are just resistant need to hear before we get into the fire round? I mean, I think, you know, for me, I really, again, my business being only 20 months old or whatever it is, um, you know, I've always, I mean, I live in an affluent area. Sure. Like, I think, you know, maybe there's a little bit of talent b- behind the scenes, maybe just a little, <laughs> so modest, you know, yeah. <laughs> but um, um, mostly I will say once I started putting myself out there and once I started utilizing Instagram the way that I utilize it now, I saw my business explode by leaps and bounds. And, um, it's working to, like I said before, it's working twofold for me because it is, I'm, it, it's, um, I'm incoming, you know, with a lot of interest and followers and clients and opportunities. And, you know, I have had several builders reach out to me, um, not necessarily end use clients, but builders reach out to me wanting to work together yeah. or giving me opportunities because of, you know, they follow me on Instagram. That's big um, money. Working with yeah. builders, yeah. That, it, that's it is. a holy grail for a lot of designers. Listening. I have several builders that I do in-house design with, in addition to, you know, all my custom projects that I do. Um, again, through either connected through Instagram directly or through clients who found me on Instagram. When are you delegating this out? Are you still doing this all yourself? I do have an assistant, okay, you know, good. then but but um <laughs> we work hard, you know, we work hard. It's it's no joke. Yeah. Um, it's a full time job. But but I did see, and then again, it's also helping me filter out the clients that I know I want to work with, you know, because mm-hmm. this is a fu- supposed to be a fun job and we're supposed to enjoy what we do. We work so hard every day, right? Mm-hmm. And why do we do this if we're not going to love what we do? And I f- feel very strongly that if you don't like my personality, you don't like what I'm putting out there, I don't know that we're going to be a great match to work together. And I want to enjoy what I do every day. And I want to make projects that are beautiful and that I'm passionate about. And um, I want all of us to have a good experience, you know, myself and the client. And I feel very strongly that by putting myself out there on Instagram, it is helping me achieve all of those goals by inbounding and also filtering. Clearly it is. I mean, you're already not even two years and already at the million dollar mark and getting all these connections. It's quite an inspiration. I'm, I can't wait to see what you do next and following your career. That's amazing. So impressive. Thank you. Now, Allison, I have to ask you, are you ready for the what up wingnut round? I don't know. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. (laughs) I don't know. I don't think so. You're not really (laughs) nervous, but let's see. Let's see how you do. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Okay. So I thought about this. Did you? And my first initial instinct was to say, hashtag Team Zero Chill, obviously. But I changed my mind and my hashtag is going to be never, hashtag nevertheless, she persisted. I like that. That's beautiful. You're stuck yeah. on a deserted island, but you can have one food forever. What is it? My mama's spaghetti and meatballs all day long, baby. How cute. That's sweet. I love that. <laughs> Last but not least, please recommend a book that has impacted you either on a personal or professional level. So I am not a big book reader, but <laughs> um, I have read quite a few um, entrepreneurial books that have kind of motivated me. Sure. And I would have to say most recently, the book that I've connected with the most was um, Gary Vee's Crushing It. That's a good book. Yeah, I forgot yeah, about that. Book. It's been a minute since I've read it, but that's a terrific book. I love that. It's My a- friend is mm-hmm. actually in that book. He's actually fe- one of the in- interviewees in uh, that book. Oh, cool. Yeah. Who's, who's your yeah. friend? Timothy Roman. Oh, okay. Do you cool. remember his yeah. story? He's actually my cabinet vendor. <laughs> okay. Full isn't, circle. <laughs> isn't that crazy? What a small world. Yeah. yeah. Allison Handler, thank you so much for joining us. Please tell the listeners where they can go to follow you on Instagram or anything else that you want to tell them, and uh, we'll call it a day. 
Okay, so I'm on Instagram at, at Allison Handler Design, no S, just design. And um, my website is AllisonHandlerDesign.com. Nice. Cool. And I'm on Pinterest, I'm on Facebook, but those are really my two um, main portals. <laughs> your your main portals to another yeah, dimension. Exactly. Right. Awesome. <laughs> Allison, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, again, uh, I look forward to seeing what you do. I know that you've heard me tell you guys a million times how important it is to be authentic and to put yourself out there for your firm to attract your tribe, to attract those clients and tribe. I mean, that's so 2017, 2018 term for what I'm talking about. But you know what I mean. And everybody has their own story, their own idiosyncrasies, their own things that are going to attract that ideal client, friends, vendor partners, relationships on Instagram. And if you don't make yourself vulnerable and put yourself out there, they're not going to know. How are they going to know? How are they going to know if they like you, if they want to work with you, if they want you in their house looking through their underwear drawers to see how you live your life to design best? So anyway, um, follow her example. Not even two years, not even 3,000 clients. She's making money off of Instagram, which is theoretically a free platform to use. Um, you're leaving money on the table if you're not using it. All right. That's it for this week's interview, guest interview. Tune in Monday to our mini news sesh. If you guys haven't tuned into that, super easy, bite-sized, informational, what's going on in the digital realm for marketing for us. And of course, every Wednesday we have these beautiful guest interviews. Oh, and don't forget, Designed by Wingnut Social is on YouTube. So you can see Allison Handler in all her splendor with her fashion accoutrement, <laughs> she's she's quite a character and she's um terrific she is gonna i predict big things for allison handler here so you guys are gonna want to tune in and just see what that's all about remember until next time to get out there get uncomfortable and what be mediocre no be great just tell me briefly how you got into the interior design industry at all, where you started your marketing, and we'll dig into have a, excuse me, blooper. <laughs> There's that dog again. Man, um, the mail's here, Amazon's here, who knows? <laughs> I'm so full of <laughs> uh, Is there whiskey in this? I'll never tell.